Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers Season Replay. Uh, today we have the end of May special edition where we will look at the league leaders and the uh, standings for the American League and the National League. We're going to do something a little bit different today though. We're going to uh, take a look at the, the accumulated stats uh, for the two plus seasons that we've played so far. Uh, and when you consider the fact that in the 1981 sim, uh, we basically missed uh, two months of that season due to the uh, labor strike. Uh, you had the first two months of this season, and we're looking at really two full seasons of leaders. So uh, that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, let's go ahead and get started with uh, the American League standings. And as you can see here with our horrible loss yesterday, we fall to a half game back of Baltimore. I would have to say Baltimore probably is the class of the division. They've suffered a lot of injuries this year, and they're just now bouncing back from those. Uh, all of their offense is back, it looks like, um, and they have a lot of depth. They made several trades this year, uh, getting Marino and Bannister and Young and Luzinski and Castino. Uh, all of those players in the starting lineup, uh, basically everyday starters, and Glenn Hubbard also at second base uh, where he's sharing time with Wayne Krenchicki. So those are all trades that they've made um, that have made them, uh, you know, a real contain a contender in this division. Uh, they, I don't even see anyone in the minor leagues that they've even used in the majors. So uh, if you look at the pitchers real quick, you'll see here that um, Mike Boddicker just came back yesterday after our game uh, versus them and uh, then they have Jim Palmer out for another 55 days so uh, yeah a really a uh, strong team uh, they have the highest paid uh, player in the American League Randy Jones I think that's why they have so few uh, minor leaguers is they have so much money allocated to the starters that there aren't any uh, there's really not anyone uh, to fill up their minor leagues they have no spare cash so anyway, well, that's um, the uh, Baltimore Orioles. We're not going to do this for every team. Uh, we will take a look at Detroit, though. We do have the uh, second best ERA in the in the American League. If you take a look at our lineup, uh, if we go go ahead and put um, Mickey Hatcher back in there, and uh, we call this our everyday lineup for the most part. I mean, it could be worse. Uh, our biggest problem right now, uh, without a doubt, is Andre Dawson. Uh, we paid him big money, uh, $320,000 for this year, next year, and he has not produced uh, uh, one iota. I mean, he has uh, 26 RBI, so that's pretty decent. Like, he'll, he appears to be coming through in the clutch. I mean, 26 RBI in 47 game games is pretty decent, but his OPS is under 600, uh, which is just, um, you know, just devastating to our offense. If we could just get him going, we would be you know, probably in first place and a couple games up. Um, every, otherwise, our offense is not horrible. Greg Brock uh, does walk a lot. So his OPS, oh, his on-base percentage is uh, pretty decent, uh, but the average is poor. And everybody else is doing okay. Reggie Jackson has fallen off uh, the ledge here in the last month. I mean, you can just take a moment here and look at his log. And you can see here, I mean, he did have a little bit of a hit streak going, including pinch hitting. Um, he's batting 268 in the last 20 games, but he hasn't had a hit in his last 14 at-bats plus, probably. So not great. Um, he has provided us with some home runs, which we did not expect. So we'll take uh, any uh, power that we can get. We are leading the American League in home runs. Actually, we're leading all of baseball in home runs right now, I believe. And then you take a look at our bench. Triple A, uh, we've got nobody to really work with. Uh, Jeffrey Leonard, of course, was projected to be our right fielder this year. But Glenn, uh, Glenn Wilson stole it from him. And uh, we won't even probably need him this year the way things are going. He is a free agent at the end of the season. So we may uh, attempt to trade him to a team that could possibly use him. So we don't completely lose him. Um, if you look at our double A, uh, again, really nobody here ready to move up. Hojo actually did play in the 1982 season, 
uh, but I don't foresee him making it. Uh, Andres Galarraga, our first baseman of the future, hasn't shown a lot in double A. And um, our single A ball players, again, I mean, we really just don't have any batters uh, that we you know, can use anytime soon. Our pitching is what's really uh, disappointed us this, this year. We've already sent down uh, Bryn Smith. We lost Dan Petrie for another 53 games. When he comes back with his high ratings, we'll put him right in there. And uh, either Bruce Robbins or Tom Filer will lose that job. I don't want to see Bryn Smith again unless it's an absolute emergency. We could actually give Brian Kelly a couple starts. Um, he just got promoted to, to uh, AAA, and you can see he's been a great pitcher in the minors. So he's somebody at age 23 uh, who does have a future for us, but he could also be someone we trade away for an established veteran uh, where we could maybe get somebody we can rely on uh, down the stretch uh, of this baseball season. Our bullpen is struggling lately, but uh, overall they've been pretty good. We really do need an official closer. We're sharing the job between righty-lefty matchups with um, Roger Weaver and Dave Rucker. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy with that, but they are getting the job done for the most part. Uh, Weaver does have one blown save, and Rucker doesn't have any. So, uh, that's Detroit there. So, that, that's um, what we need right now as far as going forward is one starting pitcher, one closer and maybe a solid middle infielder for a backup. Um, we have to take a look at Kansas City. We have yet to play any team in the West, although um, that is coming very soon. We have to look at Kansas City. Best record in baseball, an 857 OPS, so it's coming down. Um, they have suffered many injuries to their pitching staff. Uh, but their hitters are out of control. Oh, wow, they are listed as tired, too. Um, they've made a couple of trades. I don't know if it's helped them much. But uh, Willie Wilson batting 336. Rance Molnix batting 387. George Brett finally under 400, making a run at 400 this year. Willie Aikens batting 324. Um, Pat Share. I mean... These players here are are crazy uh, high batting averages for, for who they are and what they've done in their careers. Look at this. They sent Butch Davis to the minors. He was only batting 353 with 26 runs scored and 22 RBI, seven stolen bases. They sent our boy Gary Hancock down, who's batting 310. Uh, so I don't know what their plan is. Um, and maybe they don't need a real plan uh, to win this division. But um, considering that their pitching staff has lost uh, Rich Gale, they lost Paxton, they just got him back. Um, it looks like, I mean, you know, Busby, Paschal, Paxton were all out of baseball by 1982. Dennis Leonard was in his final year, and he was injured in real life, so he didn't pitch too much uh, in '82. Um, no, he was injured in 82. He did pitch beyond this year. But in 82 he was a season he missed completely. He's got 11-2 and two record. That's unbelievable. They traded away uh, Quisenberry last year. And now Raleigh Eastwick is their closer. And he's getting the job done. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this team, I don't know how they're going to hang on with these low-rated players. But um, it looks like they are in control Seattle doing a great job uh, moving up into second place, a team that's been horrible for a few years. And the Angels have fallen to last place. Um, so, uh, you know, that son of a bitch, Frank Tanana, he is available for trade. And I am considering maybe making an offer for him. I just don't like Frank Tanana, and I also don't really like lefty starters very much. Uh, they never really do well in this game unless they're pitching against us so um so we're keeping uh, an eye on him they might trade him and uh he's got a million dollar salary and we cannot afford that so we would have to get rid of payroll um in order to take that on let's take a look at the national league real quick 
Look at this. Out of nowhere, the New York Mets, Freddy's New York Mets, have a half-game lead. Philadelphia and Montreal have, uh, I guess, just been jumbled around. Let's take a look at the Mets. Who do they have that makes them so good? Uh, Danny Goodwin. His numbers aren't great, but he is a MVP in this game. Uh, he won the MVP in 1980, and then he just seems to keep getting traded around. So not off to a good start there. Uh, Wally Backman. Joel Youngblood's got 11 home runs. I mean, again, how is this team doing it? Uh, a bunch of no-names, really. Uh, and they don't have anybody injured, so this is this is how they're doing it. Take a look at uh, the Mets pitching staff. Ownby, Mike Scott, Craig Swan won an ERA title. Walt Terrell getting called up um, in 1982, not looking so good. Um, and a pretty decent bullpen. And uh, no injuries. So like that's got to be their key, is they're just hanging in there without um, getting injured. So the Mets have a half-game lead, and the Reds, are starting to pull away. They have the second best record in uh, baseball. And taking a look at this team, they are all about speed. They just traded for uh, Joe Patini to play shortstop from uh, th from the uh, Giants organization. They sent him a couple of minor league pitchers. And uh, so, yeah, they got Kim Allen from the Mariners last year and Bud Bowling both. Uh, Joe Patini this year, Dwayne Murphy they got from the A's. Uh, so they're all contributing. Ron Oyster, uh, Ron Esther was the um, uh, player who lost the job at short. They have George Foster on the bench. And uh, anyway, I mean, pretty solid hitting team. Only one 300 hitter. That's Ken Griffey Sr. And then pitching. Um, wow, for having the second best record, I don't see a lot here that makes me excited. Uh, but uh, Mario Soto has been injured, best ERA, I believe, in the National League. And uh, he's going to be out for six more days before he comes back. Tom Seaver's in there, still moving along with his career, age 37, 3 and 4. He only had five starts the previous year. Um, so that's uh, how the standings uh, look so far through the month of May. We have 10 days to the amateur draft. Um, I guess we should just take one quick look at that. I hadn't planned on doing this, but look at this. It is the draft with Barry Bonds uh, as the number one draft pick in the game. So uh, the Phillies have the number one draft pick. Can you imagine Barry Bonds going to the Phillies instead of the Pirates? Uh, then we have um, Jose Canseco, Daryl Hamilton, this Brady Anderson, um, Ellis Burke's a good hitter. Rob Dibble, one of the nasty boys. Kevin Tappany. Um, I mean, Dwight Gooden. Doc Gooden way down the list at 89. Um, he's a, He would, would be a steal at that point. If he's there when it gets to be our turn, uh, that would be a good pick. Jay Buhner, a uh, longtime closer for the White Sox. Roberto Hernandez. Rafi Palmero. Is on there, probably uh, would be in the Hall of Fame if he didn't use the roids. So there's um, some seriously good players there in the draft this season. Um, I think we have a mid to late round pick, so it's going to be maybe slim pickings for us. But Okay, let's get to the leaders. And as you can see here, I have it set up 1980 to 1982, so that's all the way through the end of this month. Um, I have it set to career totals. So we're going to look at um, the batting leaders so far since we've begun this sim, which of course started in 1980. So we're looking at, although it says three seasons, it's really two full seasons. And uh, George Brett batting almost 400 this year. He is the uh, has the best batting average of anyone. Oh, let, you know what? Let's just put them together. Let's do this. Let's do it this way. So here's everybody. Um, this way we'll save some time, and you can still see uh, how great some of these players are. So, yeah, George Brett, overall, the best National League player is Ted Simmons. 
uh, betting 317. I mean, a lot of names, these are all Hall of Famers. I mean, Brett, Boggs, Simmons, Molitor. Johnny Ray was Rookie of the Year. Willie Mays, Aikens. Um, Danny Goodwin won a um, American League MVP his first year in our sim. Carney Lansford won a batting title in real life in 1981. Um, Claudel Washington, National League MVP, now in the Yankees. Former Tiger, Gary Hancock. Maybe we underestimated Gary Hancock. I don't know. Another Hall of Famer, Dave Parker, Robin Yount. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's Mad Dog, Bill Madlock. All, a lot of very uh, big names for as much as we may complain about the Keith drum rights uh, working their way in to the lineup every day. Uh, you still see pretty much here all the major names. Steve Lubertich, maybe another that you wouldn't normally find. Um, and interestingly enough, Wade Boggs at age 23, the youngest on the list. So very interesting. Let's go ahead and do the next stat. Let's go back to, uh, let's take a look at that bats. So Trammell and Whitaker, right up there with the league leaders, uh, Willie Randolph, overall the leader uh, in at bats. Um, we'll just go right to the list, complete games. So we're gonna look at the pitchers now. Lefty, Steve Carlton, 23 complete games. Floyd Bannister of Seattle with 19 multiple players, including Burt, Blylevin, Nolan Ryan, Steve Rogers. There's that son of a bitch, Frank Danana. Stefan Weaver, no surprise there. Roger Slagle. Jim Palmer falling down this list as he's injured. No Tigers. We just don't do that very often. I don't know if we have 23 complete games combined with all of our pitchers in three seasons. Uh, we don't care about defensive ERA. Uh, let's look at doubles. 106 doubles for Ken Oberkfell of the Cardinals. Let's take a look at what he's done. He had 58 doubles and no home runs in 1980, the first year of our sim at age 24. 58 to 32 during the um, strike year and 16 this year. I'm sure he probably didn't do that in real life. Uh, I would love to know, um, but it's we're not gonna we're not gonna investigate that right now. Um, going down the list, no tigers. We our ballpark is not set up for doubles. That's not something that we're good at. Um, is there any other really odd names in here? Mike Squires at 66. He's 40 behind Ken Oberkful. Um Yeah, so inter just interesting to see uh, the players on that list. Okay, grounding in a double play. Is it Parrish? No, he's 10 back of Ron Hassey. A lot of slow ball players on this list. Is there anybody with speed at all? Uh, just out of curiosity, JT. Yeah, these are all incredibly slow Base runners, uh, Parrish with 52. Um, yeah, just because we can't, he, he can't hit and run, so we can't put anybody in motion in front of him. Uh, ERA, since we're here, J.R. Richard, the legally, uh, the overall leader in uh, ERA, 2.59. Take a look at the rest of this list. No Tigers on there. I'm surprised that um, Rosie's not on there. I mean, He's had a couple pretty decent seasons, but um, some odd. there are some odd names. There's always going to be. There's Alan Ramirez who just beat us yesterday. Dan Worthen is available for a trade. I looked at him as a possible um, starter. He's cheap. Uh, let's take a look at the next category. Extra base hits. George Brett with 131 overall extra base hits, up by 14 on the next team which is our uh, next team, the next uh, batter, which is Keith Hernandez. And Alan Trammell makes this list. He's had a century of home runs, 100. So a decent amount in his three seasons. Uh, that's because he did lead and um, he was among the leaders in home runs. He does get a few triples, so you add all that in there. Uh, some interesting names. Okay, so this is something I do want to do. I do want to look at the fielding averages uh, over the seasons. This is going to be, I, I mean, if we see a Tiger on here, other than maybe Lou Whitaker, I'm going to be shocked. So here we go. 
Lance Parrish, 12th overall in fielding. He just had two errors in yesterday's game in a pass ball. Uh, Butch Weiniger now on Seattle, the best defensive catcher, at least based on fielding average. Jim Sundberg absolutely makes sense. Uh, bad dude, John Stearns, Bud Bowling, the MVP, Ron Hassey, Charlie Moore, great defensive catcher. Uh, Tim Blackwell, wow. Keith Moreland, he was originally a catcher. Um, that's what he's specified as here, but uh, he was a first baseman outfielder uh, primarily. Ted Simmons is down the list. The worst overall, Dave Rader. Youch, not great. 9-62. So interesting. Let's take a look at first base over the three seasons. Yeah, there's no Tigers here. Uh, we have traded away um, a few names including uh, Jason Thompson, who, despite winning a gold glove for us, is kind of down the list. Ken Phelps, the worst. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anybody else on here that stands out. Cesar Sedano is a first baseman. He was a center fielder, whatever. Dave Bergman, we like Bergie. Uh, Dave Stapleton was an all-star. But Mike Squires, overall, is the best defensive First baseman, has he won a gold glove? He has not. Spanky is his nickname. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, second base. Oops, what am I doing? Sorry. All right, second base. Sweet Lou, way down the list. Despite winning a gold glove, Ken Oberkfell, uh, number one overall, 987. Uh, you can find your own, your, your favorite team on here. Find a player. Yeah, Lou, way down the list. The worst being Keith Drumright at 972. Garth Orge, Bump Wills, Bobby Gritch. That's a surprise. Okay, let's take a look at third base. Yeah, we don't have anybody here either. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Uh, Tom Brookins is on the list. 938, one of the worst. Of course, he's on Cleveland now. Bill Madlock, Paul Dade is the worst listed at 933. The best being Steve Ontiveros of Montreal. Uh, Mike Cubbage on the bench for Baltimore. Uh, you're not going to see um, Hatcher. He hasn't, he hasn't played enough to qualify. Uh, but he would, be, he would be further down the list. Too. Even Mike Schmidt, number 13, at age 32. Okay, shortstops, Ellen Trammell. Wow, higher up the list than you might think. I mean, it seems like every other game he is committing an error. The best defensive shortstop so far is Fran Mullins of the White Sox, followed by Ozzie Smith. Joe Patini, who just got traded, number three overall. The worst is Tony Phillips, not a great defensive player. He played second base as well as first, played left field for the Tigers, a little bit too so he's, he's a little bit more of a utility guy uh, and you can see here the uh, rest of the shortstops on this list okay let's get to the outfielders left field what about Gibby is he on the list he is not on the list we've used him a lot as a DH up until this season so that kind of makes sense Steve Kemp was our um, left fielder primarily Right in the middle. The best overall is Tom Grant of the Pods. Uh, he was a, originally a, a Chicago Cub, and now he's playing every day for the Padres. Um, 977 fielding percentage for an outfielder. Not great. Maybe our outfielders are not that uh, good defensively. Let's take a look at center field. Ricky won a gold glove last year, but he's way down the list at 15 Bill North of the Giants, uh, number one overall, 995%. Uh, Willie Wilson, also in the 99 percentile. Then we have uh, Lee Mazzilli. Uh, Gorman Thomas doesn't even start anymore. And a bunch of really good names here. Ron the floor on the bench now. Rick Peters, we traded him away in 1980, and he's, on the lead. he's uh, one of the league leaders. Terry Poole is the worst. At 967. Right field overall, Chris Bourgeois is uh, number one, 994. 
the great Dave Winfield is second. Richie Zisk, one of the worst defenders uh, in the outfield. He pretty much was a DH um, by 1980. This is the kind of player who was born to be a DH, and yet he's among the league leaders in fielding percentage. And uh, no Tigers on this list. Gary Hancock, 972. We got him for defensive reasons, and he never really did all that well in the outfield. Uh, but he sure could hit. Okay, so there we are defensively. Most games pitched. Do you think that there would be a lot of Tigers on this list? But uh, Roger Weaver is uh, tied for fourth. We have Cappy down the list. He spent some time in the minors. Maybe he would be higher. But uh, Bruce Suter topping the list at 140, followed by uh, Rally Fingers, Jeff Reardon, Bert Roberge, uh, Mark Littell. And there's Dave Tobik. Um, he's on Toronto now. Tippy Martinez is available for trade, but he makes too much money. Pat Underwood, another Tiger. So there's a couple other Tigers on this list. Okay, uh, games played overall. Yep, Whitaker and Trammell. I never take them out unless they say they're tired. Uh, and uh, Trammell does come up more often than Whitaker. Are there any other Tigers that are gone on this list? Uh, Kemp at 292. Otherwise, uh, the best non-Tiger is Mike Gates, who is a second baseman for Montreal. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, uh, next one up is pitchers grounding into double play. Jack Morris has 60. You'd think there'd be more Tigers on this list with the, our ballpark effect uh, being very high in uh, double plays. Uh, Doc Medich is number one with Roger Slagle of the Yankees. And you can take a look down the list here and find your favorite players. Hits overall. Let's see here. This is a, a big category. Uh, George Brett, almost 400 hits in two seasons. That's pretty impressive. Um, Alan Trammell on that list, 348. Uh, no Lou, though. Since Lou's played in the second most games, you think just by proxy he'd be up here, but he's not. Um, any surprises? Orlando Gonzalez. Kim Allen, he's got speed. He gets a lot of infield singles. Keith Drumright, that's a surprise. Johnny Ray was a, a 280 career hitter, hitter I believe. Um, hits per nine innings. J.R. Richard is the best at that. No Tigers. Hit batters. Carlton, lefties hit the most batters with 15, and Jack Morris is second. With 14, that's a surprise. All right. What players have been hit by the pitch the most? Ron Hassey, 11. And Parrish and Trammell on the list with 8. Here we go. Home runs, big category. Jason Thompson, who lost his job. Is he in? Yeah, he's actually in Triple A. Has the most home runs within this time period. And he's not even in the majors. That, that's probably why Boston is struggling so much. They got Fred Lynn, though. He's number two. Um, Eddie Murray, Daryl Porter now in the Cubbies. And then, of course, Trammell, who consistently hits uh, 18 or 20 home runs, somewhere in that range. George Brett, Dan uh, Dreesen, Bobby Gritch. I mean, there's going to be some names on this list um, that... Probably should be higher. Mike Schmidt, 38. He plays in Houston now, uh, where the Astrodome is a big uh, um, center field. So uh, what else? Anybody else of note? Not really. Okay, so home runs. In three years, uh, two full years, 49 home runs. That's one season's worth of home runs these days. Who's given up the most home runs? Oh, that's no surprise. Larry McCall of Cleveland has given up 88. Bill Paschal. Fergie Jenkins has given up 60 home runs, and he's been in the minor leagues all season this year. Dave Rosemus has given up 50, most for Detroit. Jack has given up 43. Pretty crazy. Home run percent. The highest, of course, is JT. Trammell on the list. 
The most innings pitched. No Tigers on this for sure. Uh, some of these you know, teams, they use four-man rotation, so they're going to have a little bit of an edge. Um, J.R. Richard and Nolan Ryan, both for Houston, are one and two. Anybody else here of note? Nope. Okay. Uh, moving on, innings per game. Uh, Carlton, almost eight innings per game. Actually, it's just a minuscule, di uh, a half inning per game difference between the 25th best pitcher and the number one pitcher. Um, intentional walks. This is curious. Chet Lemon on Milwaukee. That team, they don't have any home run hitters. So I get why they would walk Lemon to get to some other schlub on that team. Although they kicked our ass. So um, in fact, I probably <laughs> account for half of those. So interesting. Okay. Uh, isolated power. I don't care about on base percentage. I'm curious. Uh, Willie Mays Akins, 393. Ricky Henderson at 365. This guy probably should remain in our um, leadoff role, even though he really does suck. Uh, he, he can't steal bases. Um, outfield assists. Richie Zist, look at this clown. Unbelievable. Because I always run on him and he throws us out. Ricky Henderson has uh, 16. Steve Kep before we traded him was up there as well okay uh, i don't care let's look at the ops no tigers on this list probably a lot of kansas city players right considering where they stand right now who would a funk that uh rance molinix with 814 would be the 13th best ops george orda rounding it out a, a 10 home run a year, second baseman. P total plate appearances, Whitaker number two, Trammell number six, Willie Randolph leading overall. Quality starts, no Tigers on this list, that's for sure. Craig Swan leading overall, getting the job done. Quality start percentage, whatever. We don't care about range factor necessarily. Runs batted in, Trammell. Number nine overall with 181. George Brett's on there leading the league, uh, both leagues technically. JT, again, not even on a major league roster. And uh, Carl Pagel will round it out with RBI. Uh, runners per night. I guess we're, yeah. Uh, oh, doesn't even work. Runners thrown out. Parrish, 78. Oh, wow. Dennis Littlejohn, we, I don't know much about him. He's thrown out 115. Does he have a good arm or a bad arm? He has a great arm. Holy cow, this guy should be our backup. A 91 arm and a 90 defensive rating. Solid range. Holy smokes. That's impressive. That's one guy you do not run on. All right. Runners thrown out percentage. So Parrish, I mean, we complain about him, but he's sixth best overall uh, during this time frame. Runs scored. Oh, wow. Sweet Lou, one behind George Brett. George Brett is definitely the MVP, uh, the overall MVP of these uh, two-plus years we simmed. Ricky Henderson on the list. There's Tram. Very cool. I don't care about runs created. Sacrifices Craig Swan. Uh, is Tommy Brookins on there? No. Mostly pitchers. Sacrifice flies George Brett. I mean, can't argue with George Brett. Who does make the most money? Let's take a look. Okay, it's J.R. Richard now. It, he, he has uh, superseded Randy Jones. And... Uh, Doug Rao was the highest paid free agent la uh, of the last free agent uh, signing, so he's 20th. Then we have Morris and Trammell at the bottom of that list. Overall saves. Yeah, no Tigers on here. Uh, Lopez had 33 for us um, that one year, and then we traded him or got rid of him or whatever. And we've really had no one come close. Mark Clear with the most uh, during this period is available for trade. And I am looking at him as a possibility. 
Save success. Everyone's going to have 100, right? Uh, no. Skip Lockwood, 88.9. Okay. Uh, shutouts. Anybody have 10? No. Uh, El Presidente, J.R. Richard, lefty. That son of a bitch. Has uh, 7, 8, 9. So there's a few. Jack Morris has four shutouts. That's impressive, considering how uh, we sometimes get beat around. Slugging, George Brett, 512. Starts. Who's been the healthiest? Doc Medich has been the healthiest. That makes sense. Two more starts than anybody else. He must have just had a start. Steals. Here we go. This is the category you've been waiting for. Ricky Henderson. Uh, a precipitous fall. To, uh, with only 115. Kim Allen's got 174. Two Cincinnati Reds on the list. And uh, Dave Collins, who's not even on a team right now, is on the list. Rusty McNeely, who took over for Ricky in center field for Oakland, is on that list as well. Um, steel success. <laughs> no Ricky at all. No Ricky. Strikeouts by a hitter. Almost 300 by Carl Pagel. Uh, Lance Parrish is on that list. You see a lot of uh, swig and miss guys. Some power guys. Um, so, yeah. Strikeouts. Okay, let's move on. Strikeouts pitcher. Here's pitcher's strikeouts. Nolan Ryan, almost 500. Uh, Jack Morris is on the list with 298. Um, not really a strikeout pitcher, though. And I suppose probably anyone under 349 is probably not a strikeout pitcher. Steve Busby was in his career. Um but uh, then he got injured, and so um, still gets some strikeouts, I suppose. Okay, next up is uh, how, well, K's per nine. So Nolan Ryan has eight. I mean, if you don't have nine K's per nine now, you probably uh, are getting stuck in the bullpen. Uh, it rounds out at Fergie Jenkins with 5.46. Hey, the Jack Morris is on the list. So uh, that makes sense because he is one of the better strikeout pitchers. I think his high is um, 10 or 11 that one game. Strikeout percent. Keith Drumright does not strike out three times every uh, 100 at-bats. Um, and Trammell on the list at 9.6. Coming up to the end here, folks. Uh, total bases. Trammell up there. George Brett, no doubt Always going to be up there at the top. Triples. Willie Randolph has 20. Nicely done. Ricky Henderson, uh, even though he's not a, a triples guy in his real major league career, he's right up there. Trammell also on that list. Walks. Uh, Glenn Gulliver, former Tiger. We traded him to uh, the Cubbies for um, Rick Russell. And now all he does is get on base. Uh, and Ricky walks. That's good. It's good to see Ricky on there. And yeah, a lot, a lot of names you would think you might find. All right. Uh, walks per nine by pitcher. Dave Rosma, second best pitcher in baseball, best in the American League at not walking batters. Wins. Category that hardly means anything anymore, but this is still the 80s where it was uh, important to get a pitcher win. Rosie and Jack Morris on the list, headed by Steve Rogers, winning 40 games uh, for the Montreal Expos. He won 23 that first season, uh, and then another 17, basically, uh, over the next uh, accumulated two seasons. So, okay, uh, winning percentage doesn't really matter, but we'll take a look. All right, so Stefan, oh yeah, Stefan Weaver, this guy never loses. 32 and 10 in his career. Okay, so that's going to do it. I hope that was entertaining. I, I hope you were as curious as I was about that. Um, the leaders uh, accumulated so far. We flip it over to June. We have two more games versus Baltimore. In Baltimore, then we go to County Stadium again, then we go back to Baltimore. 
And then we go home to face the Indians and the Red Sox. We're going to keep the robot race going. We're almost done with the first round, and then we'll head into the second round. Uh, before you know it, we'll have ourselves a winner. It looks like the White Sox are going to be the first National League West team that we're going to face. That comes up later this month. We have the draft on the 10th to look forward to. That's going to be fun. Uh, that's going to do it for this. Uh, if you are not already a subscriber and you watch this long, why are you not subscribed? Come on, man. Every time we have a game, it'll send you a little notification. You'll know when it's done. You don't have to wait for me to post it. Um, you'll automatically know. So uh, I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, until tomorrow, everyone, have a great night.